Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 475, How to Make a Health and Fitness Lifestyle. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moffin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health, and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moffin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. This week, we're very fortunate to have with us Mr. Mike Jodis. Mike, welcome, and thank you for coming. Thank you for Mike is me. the founder, owner and, uh, of the Fitness Edge, which is a private training facility here in St. Louis that Dr. Moffin and I both go to for our training and exercise programs. Mike, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what brought you to found Fitness Edge. I started the company in 1984, and um, I'd always been passionate about health and fitness. I've been an athlete most of my life. And um, I knew that I couldn't sit at a desk. <laughs> and no offense to anyone that does, but it was just not me. I have too, I'm too wired. I'm too intense. And um, it just something, it's just something that I was very passionate about, helping people to improve and helping them with things that I knew that they weren't aware of or what, how to do. For mm-hmm. example, the anaerobic side of things, the lifting piece. People, when they go to a gym or health club, don't really understand how to do that. Mm -hmm. All the people that are out there right now, unless, again, they're Mr. America, Mr. Universe, they they can walk into a fitness facility and own it. Um, For the rest of us, it's I'm not sure how to utilize all these machines Mm -hmm. and what's best for me, taking into consideration my biomechanical issues, my fitness level, my goals. People Mm -hmm. aren't clear on how to do that. So that's what we do, and that's what we help them with. So before I came to Fitness Edge, I had joined two or three gyms and never went. Didn't go for exactly what you said. I walk in, I didn't know what I was supposed to do. I didn't really feel comfortable. There are all these muscle-bound guys looking at me, you know, like like the old Charles Atlas the <laughs> yeah. thing from, from high school. And I just wouldn't go. And I'd make excuses not to go. Since I've been working with you at your facility, when, when I first came to you at, at Dr. Maupin's insistence, because she's been with you since you began. So when I first came, you sat with me and did an assessment of me and actually had me do some things so that you could determine where's a good starting point for where I am. And then we sat down and talked about what what might be my goals. What should I try to accomplish? What should I work on first? And then you met with the trainer that you assigned to me, went over your notes with him, and then I came in the next week and he knew what he wanted to do. And it was a very fluid, smooth flowing process I think I've been there three years now, and I come twice a week. So it's it, it's good. That's, I mean, what, what you're talking about is what works. That's completely what, why I have gone for 32 years is because I, it's, it makes me accountable. I have an appointment, so I'm going to be there. And if I'm not there, I they call me, ask me why was I sick? Was I? But I'm rarely not there. I mean, right. I want to go, and I want. There's a social atmosphere there that you know all the people that train at the same time. They may be kids, or they may be 93, as you told me yes. earlier, that your oldest client's 93. And they may be athletes, or they may be like me. I'm not an athlete. I never have been. And, and But I just want to be strong and have good muscles and be healthy and not have to kill myself dieting. And by the way, you can't diet enough to lose weight unless you exercise and build muscle, because muscle's where you burn all your calories. So that's just my, my commercial. So, so yeah. we're both Very saying true. to you, you're training program method works. How did you develop that? I mean, it's not common in my experience at all. So what, what, what were you looking for and how did you develop this? Yeah. Um, so we have the, we utilize the four main components of body transformation. Everyone that's ever sat across from me during an assessment process has said, I want some level of transformation, more flexibility, range of motion, strength, tone, less body fat, whatever their goals may be. And we implement the four things that I know work. And we all know there's a lot of different fitness options out there today. It doesn't mean we're wonderful and everybody else is terrible by any means. I mean, exercising period is great for for anyone. But if you really want to make a change in the way your body performs or 
in many cases, looks. looks. <laughs> no one's ever mad at me if they look better. <laughs> ever. <laughs> and, and your clients look better. As we watch them work out, we look better, they look better, we can watch that happen. And the thing that's kind of interesting is a lot of, we've seen people over the years that can do amazing feats of strength mm -hmm. or maybe even endurance, mm -hmm. but it wouldn't necessarily be a body that you would aspire to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you see someone who looks fit, you, you can't deny that. Mm -hmm. If they look fit, they are. Mm -hmm. Well, so we so, really put that as part of it. So <clears throat> in my limited experience, some of that is about form and, yes. and mm -hmm. the learning the exact precise movement that you need to make. But what I've noticed is, and I've received comments from various people, my shoulders are back regularly mm -hmm. where they used to be drooped uh, mm -hmm. and I have better posture. And, and that wasn't one of our identified goals, mm -hmm. yes. but that's been a side mm -hmm. effect. And, and I walk differently. Well, and, our trainer goes, you know, <laughs> makes it, yeah. shoulders back, shoulders yeah. back and, up. and yeah. gives us exercises to do at home. Yeah to keep us standing straight and to keep our muscles not not spasming, yes. but relaxed in the certain areas like here for me and, and tight in all the other areas that kind of keep you upright. Yes. So, she, I mean, she keeps me from getting hurt. So that's the other thing. If I went to a gym and did it by myself, I'd get hurt because I don't really, I still don't, don't know, when to, know when to stop and I don't know the right form. how many things I should do or, or what the form is and she comes and pats you and you straighten up or you... If you're doing a plank, you make sure your stomach's up and your back's flat. You know, that that is really priceless because if you get hurt, you don't work out for a while. Oh, and yeah. then everything goes backwards. No doubt. Well, and the mission is to stay on the field, almost mm -hmm. like an athlete, mm -hmm. making sure that we're doing everything correctly so people aren't on the sidelines repairing themselves. So it's not how much you push or pull, it's how you push or pull it, mm -hmm. the technique in which mm -hmm. you do. And then in regards to posture, we everyone is susceptible to postural deviations, kyphosis, rounding mm -hmm. of the shoulders, lordosis, and anterior pelvic tilt. So mm -hmm. we, those are automatics during the ex assessment process with me to make sure that we're all going to do that. We're at our desk, we're on our iPhone, we're, mm -hmm. if you're a jogger or runner, you're, you find, and find yourself in a more kyphotic stance, we really try to work on the posterior chain. So mm -hmm. two to one ratio, backside to frontside. And you side. do it without mm -hmm. shame. There's no embarrassment. There's no uh, aggressive challenging. It, it's just a very, at least my experience with the two trainers that I've had uh, and, and watching the others, they have a good relationship and they encourage positively people to do it correctly. And they model it, they demonstrate it, and they do it. Yes. When you select your trainers, what kind of process do you go through for evaluation for them? Because I think that's critical to your success. For sure. Um, every one of them will tell you about this process. I have a very um, extensive interview process with them. I do three two-hour interviews with each wow. trainer that I hire. So, and I really respect and call it our time because it is their time as well, mm -hmm. even if they are applying for the job. But I will tell them within the first five minutes that it's not easy to get a job here. And I don't mean mm -hmm. that in the wrong way, a mean way, mm -hmm. brash in any way, but I just want to let them know that we're not playing games here. We're taking people's body and health into our hands. And if you really want to make this a career, then you're in the right place. But I got to have the same drive and passion, or at least in line with what I do. Um, so we go through this three, two hour, uh, three, two hour process with each one of them if they make it to the next level. And then as I'm assessing a client and we're doing our movement pattern assessment, muscular strength testing, nutritional counseling, pictures, measurements, as you all know, um, I'm honing in on which one of the one, two, three trainers might be the right fit for, for you. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, and then I sit down with them. We cross all the T's, dot all the I's, and make sure when you walk in for workout number one, they're totally ready to go. Mm -hmm. And we don't overshoot you so you can't move for a week or you're hurt. Mm -hmm. And we don't we take precautions to mm -hmm. not undershoot where you walk mm -hmm. out and go, gosh, what a waste of time and money that was. Yeah, mm -hmm. we don't want to do that either. So we well, don't. You also I've never felt you, like that. <laughs> <laughs> good. I'm glad. Well, I, I <laughs> you think, knew you were there. Yeah, I'm glad I knew that's I was over. there. Yeah. <laughs> Best part of the workouts <laughs> when it's done. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Yeah. So you keep records. You, Dr. Moppin, I know has an in body machine. Two or three of them that he, she uses. He one. had the first one. He had you, one before. So I that's where you yeah. found out about it. Mm -hmm. So would you tell people what that is and and why you use it? Yeah. So the the in body 520 is a really unique piece of equipment. Um, it was designed in Europe by a company called Biospace. Mm -hmm. And what it does is it actually tells all of us hydration levels, 
segmentally divides the body from left to right. So you know if your dominant side, if you're right-handed, mm -hmm. uh, that side may be a bit more developed than the left, mm -hmm. top to bottom, front to back. Mm -hmm. It'll also tell us visceral body fat around the organs and subcutaneous body fat below the skin surface. Mm -hmm. So it's really a great tool. And I think more importantly than anything else is it's very user friendly mm -hmm. because the other forms that are out there like hydrostatic uh -oh. weighing in the tank of water or the, the bod pod, you know, getting mm -hmm. in this enclosed capsule, it it's, can be uncomfortable for people to do. But this is repeatable. In other words, if you get <laughs> off of it, you go walk around for 10 minutes, come back, it does this, it gives you the same results. Yes. And the reason I love it is because in, in my office, in the first four months or six months, people gain muscle yes. and lose fat, but their weight doesn't change. Yes, Not necessarily. switch. Mm -hmm. So they yeah. go, I didn't lose weight. <laughs> and then I can say, yes. well, <clears throat> you didn't lose weight, but you lost fat and you gained muscle. So here's the evidence. Because they're, I mean, they just didn't believe me. Yeah. But if I can show them this, it shows how much muscle you've gained, pounds of muscle. Yeah. Well, if we have someone that comes in that's deconditioned and they're uncomfortable mm -hmm. already, one, we try to make them feel comfortable for sure. Two, I always tell them some people like the numbers, some people don't like the numbers, mm -hmm. but it's good for us to know where we are. Mm -hmm. And when I take those pictures, especially I, <clears throat> I think more than males, females are uncomfortable taking mm -hmm. the before pictures. Mm -hmm. But I'm pretty insistent about doing it because the mission mm -hmm. would be to pull that picture out of the file three months, six mm -hmm. months later and say, remember this girl or guy. Mm -hmm. And they're yeah. like, oh yeah, because you see yourself mm -hmm. every day and you don't really notice the changes as much. Mm -hmm. But if you have hard numbers and documentation of where you started, then you can really prove to them that we're making making improvement. So what do you see as the differences between aerobic and resistance training? And what balance do you strive for? Well, why do you choose what you choose? Well, you need one with the other. So <clears throat> your resistance work, your anaerobic training helps improve muscle, tendon ligament connection, work on posture, mm -hmm. postural deviations, bone density. There's, there's your anaerobic mm -hmm. side. Mm -hmm. Your aerobic side works on your cardiopulmonary system, lowering your resting heart rate, on opposing days, flushing lactic acid from mm -hmm. the muscles that we put in when we train you, mm -hmm. things like that. So you really need both. Mm -hmm. You can't just lean too hard in one direction or another. And like you said earlier, before Kathy encouraged you to go, you're doing a lot of aerobics and kind of managing your eating, but so you may be more cardiopulmonary fit, right. but strength-wise, mm -hmm. yeah, it, was not. it continues yeah. to decline as we get older. Mm -hmm. you got to, you don't use it, you lose it. Well, right. you, guys, you guys offer Pilates. Yes. And my husband does Pilates. Yes. Because he has some uh, back, shoulder issues, and core issues. And that, but tell me about Pilates because I, I couldn't explain it exactly <laughs> to, to Brett <laughs> or to word, other people. They is. don't know exactly what it entails and what, what it's for. Um, so, Kathy Orso is our uh, Pilates teacher. She is exceptional at what she does. She's trained by Joseph Pilates and Roman. Uh, Pilates, so she's wow. really, really good at it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you know, it, it's a series of combined movements that are core focused, and it, it just has, it teaches you to wake up muscles that you normally don't think of using, mm -hmm. that have maybe gone dormant over time. And she's like your abs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Anything in that trunk, you know, yeah. that, the biggest, I call it the trunk of the tree. If mm -hmm. the trunk of the tree is strong, the limbs can be strong. Mm -hmm. So, we on the floor when we're training clients really focus on core, our biggest mm -hmm. body part. And that's really the center of what Pilates dials into. Your lower mm -hmm. back, your spinal erectors, your uh, internal, external obliques, your intercostals, hips, glutes. And just strengthens those, improves those areas because you need that base. You need that foundation. What, what patients would you suggest this for? I mean, I mean not patients, clients, sorry. Oh, yeah. Um, anybody could really do it. Mm -hmm. It just, I think it's... It's if someone's had severe back issues mm -hmm. or range of motion problems, mm -hmm. I think that's, that's when we will um, recommend mm -hmm. them, suggest that they try a session or two. And mm -hmm. Kathy's so personable and, and yeah, she's, she's such delightful. a nice, she's a wonderful person and knows her stuff and she's mm -hmm. very passionate about it. So that in itself, you know, helps uh, a client mm -hmm. get locked into Pilates. So we are really focused on a practice that takes care of people as they age. We want them to optimize their lifestyle and their ability. And one of the concerns that we have is we don't want people to get on walkers or need wheelchairs if we can Ever. avoid it. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you think in terms of age range and in terms of focal points for people that are starting to develop some of those concerns? How, how do you help them avoid that? 
I think a good statement is being able to do what you could do yesterday. Mm. And if yes. you have that mindset, I think that's really important. Another thing that we have with people is, is thinking about um, independence. I want to be independent mm-hmm. as long mm-hmm. as I possibly can. Mm-hmm. So Amen. we think of those mm-hmm. in those terms too. I'd rather be taking care of myself mm-hmm. than having someone else take care of me. Mm-hmm. So when we get someone in their twilight years, like for example, our 93-year-old client, mm-hmm. pretty impressive. Mm-hmm. I, I laughingly said earlier when we were talking, I, I want to grow up and be like him, mm-hmm. yeah. that he can drive in, walk in, work out, walk out, <laughs> get in the car and drive home and go mm-hmm. and go to work. Mm-hmm. He still works. Oh wow. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. It's it's really neat that that's he awesome. has the ability to do that. And we feel, mm-hmm. you know, good that we're part of helping mm-hmm. him to do that for a few hours a week that he invests in himself. That's great. And and in young <clears throat> what, what at what age would you start a child uh, uh, on an exercise program? Yeah, so as we know, childhood childhood obesity is a major mm-hmm. epidemic right now. Mm-hmm. And because of computers and video games and iPhones, smartphones, people are just sitting more. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, it's radiating down to our kids. Yeah. And they're just locked into those video games and locked into sitting more. So we're trying to get them in motion. And mm-hmm. everything is supersized and bigger mm-hmm. foods and portions. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a bad formula for people. And they're actually saying that, and you know probably more about this than me, Dr. Maupin, but we're at the kind of a pinnacle of where our younger generation may start living shorter lives Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. so many kids are susceptible to diabetes and all kinds of things. Yeah. Earlier duration of those diseases, they get them earlier and they last longer. So their life expectancy is shorter. Yeah. yeah, People are not kids, especially are not outside running around as much. Mm -mm. There's too many things to put them in a chair we're trying to get them off off the couch. We've also out of the made chair. parents afraid of letting their children oh, go out. No doubt, you know, no and I, you know, honestly, I think it was just as dangerous when we grew up as it is now. But we now know about it, so we get freaked out over that. So yes, yes. The kids sure. can't just go out and play. Right. But but by giving them exercise and teaching them how to exercise, that t- uses up their extra energy. So no the eighty deers can uh, calm down. Yes. And and actually concentrate, and then that also helps these other kids who are becoming obese to actually be mindful of what they eat and how much they work out because that's always being talked to by the trainer. The trainers are always talking about, what did you eat last night? Did you get enough protein? And by the way, how many grams of protein is enough protein? (laughs) I have to ask that. Sure. So for, for a female, if you're exercising, you should have at least half of your goal body weight in protein grams per day. So Mm -hmm. 0.5. So if Mm -hmm. a female wanted to weigh 130 pounds, for example, she would have 65 grams of protein Mm -hmm. per day divided by five feedings and five Mm -hmm. or smaller often, Mm -hmm. small and often eating is way better than eating three big meals or skipping Mm -hmm. breakfast Mm -hmm. and two big meals. So it's that frequency of eating that will help speed up metabolism through the Mm -hmm. thermogenic effect of food. Mm Um, for a male, it's generally about one gram per pound of body weight. So if you have a 200 pound male, he should eat 40 grams of protein per meal divided by five uh, meals per day. That's okay. usually around the range. And if you're trying to get bigger or stronger, you may bump that a little bit uh, on both mm-hmm. sides, um, depending on what your goals are, what you're trying to accomplish. Okay. So I just was curious because <clears throat> there are a lot of different opinions on that. Yeah. And uh, it's hard for me. My patients ask me that. And so. Yeah. I, that's usually the rule of thumb when it comes to someone mm-hmm. exercising. If mm-hmm. you're not exercising, eh, it just doesn't really it doesn't matter, matter. much. <laughs> yeah. It well, really doesn't. It does to me because <clears throat> we check protein levels and we check and we see people not eat enough protein for their exercise. So their protein blood levels drop. Yes. They get swollen. Yeah. They can't make muscle right. because they don't have enough of the uh, building blocks of muscle. Right. So we have to say you need protein shakes three or four times a day, or you need to have more eggs or more meat or more cheese or sure. those kind of things. And they kind of go, I've never been told that by a doctor, right. you know, and that's what you need to build muscle. So we're no building muscle with testosterone, even if they're not working out, but they build a lot better muscle and in the right places if they are, work- if they are using a trainer and then they don't get hurt as well. Well, and, and none of us can out exercise a poor eating plan. 
So right. it's if, if your training modalities are going to increase, you have to make sure the nu nutrient densities match that. Mm -hmm. Under 25 years old, yeah, maybe you can get away with it mm -hmm. before your first metabolic decline. But as those <laughs> metabolic declines come, you have to really dial in the nutritional side of it as well mm -hmm. to help accelerate the results of your efforts. That's, I mean, the, I, the one thing that we haven't asked you is exactly the paradigm that you did create, which is different. It's the paradigm of no memberships and coming in and working out with your trainer individually on, with, a, um, with an appointment and, and hitting certain goals that you, that you set with the client. So other, other things that are involved in this, you can, you can uh, tell, tell everybody, but that's what I see. Yeah, we're, we're really, again, we're trying to make people feel comfortable and welcome in a typically unwelcoming and uncomfortable environment for most people, a gym, mm -hmm. a health mm -hmm. club, a rec center. Most of them are massive. There's zillions of people everywhere. They're, they're really unclear about what they should be doing. And even unfortunately, they, if, if they go, um, th their accessibility to a lot of their equipment that they may want to use is mm -hmm. a difficult challenge as well. Mm -hmm. So because we don't have any members or memberships, the, the client gets literally a front row seat, like almost a concierge level to, to mm -hmm. exercise. Mm -hmm. My trainers being highly qualified and doing this on a full-time, regular basis, daily. Mm -hmm. This is the way they earn their living. This is their passion. This is their job. Mm -hmm. You know, it gives them the opportunity to be able to challenge the client at the correct level for them. Mm -hmm. So everybody we have is being intensely challenged, mm -hmm. but it's at the correct level for them. So even our oldest, youngest, it's designed around their 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 goals. And then we we have that that front row seat. To everything that they want to do. So, do you regulate or monitor the the like number of appointments per hour that you can comfortably have in the, in the building, uh, and, and tell your people focus on two and three o'clock in the afternoon, or focus on five and six in the morning because we need to balance this out. Because I think what you just said is really important. If people come in and they're standing around waiting to use two or three machines they're not going to stay and they're not going to do it. Yes. When we come in and, and I, I hear your people constantly saying, is anybody using this? Is anybody using that? Mm -hmm. right. And because we're, for our program, we need to use that today. Correct. And so they work together to make sure that's mm -hmm. available while we're there to use it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One communication, very high between all of us, you know, yes. and, and mm -hmm. it's verbal at times, but we want to make sure that we're not slowing the process down. Um, the other side of it is I always have all my trainers stagger. So I have some of them at the top of the hour, some at right. quarter after the uh -huh. hour, some Perfect. starting at you know half after mm -hmm. the hour. Right. And that helps the ebb and flow through the front desk, the workout floor, mm -hmm. the showers, and the parking lot. Mm -hmm. So it makes it makes uh, it expedites your check-in, check-out process so you can get on to what you really want or need to do. Well, there's a lot more management and thought process behind running a private training facility than I would have ever thought. My experience with gyms has not been positive. My experience with you has been, and I thank you so much for coming and sharing your information, your knowledge with us today. How, how can our patients or our, our listeners get a hold of you and become a, a client at Fitness Edge? Yeah, great. Um, so we're located at the corner of Olive and Old Olive, 10571 uh, Old Olive. St. Louis. St. Louis, Missouri. <laughs> yes, thank you. And then um, our number is 993-3343. So 314-993-EDGE. Mm -hmm. um, that's us. We'll, we'll okay. put that on the screen. They'll see okay. it and hear it at the same time. Great. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.